dark matter is believed to comprise roughly about 25% of this critical density. Some, some pages said 20%, some pages said 21%, 22%, but I'm just roughly estimating here uh, 25%. So if you add 5% to 25, 0.05 to 0.25, that makes 30%, right? So the rest of the stuff of the universe is the dark energy. What is dark matter, huh? Okay, well, you're going to find different sources saying different things. Uh, there's baryonic dark matter, which is uh, dark matter that is made up of things that we know of, but we don't see it. They're dark. Then there's non-baryonic dark matter, and those are these. These are known as non-baryonic dark matter. They're divided up into hard dark matter, which are particles that travel near the speed of light. Example of those, neutrinos, okay? Those are proposed example of a hot dark matter. Cold dark matter are proposed, and they are travel very slowly, okay? Examples of those, wimps and machos. Well, they are opposite to each other, right? A wimp and a macho. <laughs> so, weakly interacting massive particles. So they don't interact very well with ordinary matter. Macho, massive compact halo objects. So those are cold dark matter. And exotic dark matter proposed are axions and photinos. So these are all examples of non-baryonic dark matter. Baryonic dark matter would be stars, brown dwarfs, other things that are so dark that we don't see them. Okay. See, hot dark matter, HDM, the top-down scenarios require that dark matter be composed of a weakly interacting high-velocity particle. A massive neutrino is a good candidate for hot dark matter. See, traveling at 0.99 the speed of light. See, those are the hot dark matter model. Cold dark matter, CDM, bottom-up scenarios require that dark matter be composed of a highly massive, slow-moving particle. Note that neither of these particles are baryons. Baryons, the ordinary matter that makes up stars or planets. See, these are different category of particle, and neutrino is a different category of particle. So, how do we find out which one is true? Hot dark matter or cold dark matter? We go and look for the structure of the universe. How? Using the COBE satellite, the uh, um, um, escape me. Uh, the MWAP, the MWAP, and the Planck satellite, right? So we look at the structure of the universe. You see the cluster, filament, and the void. Remember, we talked about that at the beginning. And then filaments, clusters, and the voids. But you see how it looks kind of different from each other. According to the hot dark model, the structure of the universe should look like this. According to the cold dark matter model, the structure should look like this. So cold dark matter and the bottom up scenario predicts sharp features with weak connecting filaments here. So sorry, uh, this CDM is this one. The CDM and the bottom up scenario predict sharp features with weak connecting filaments. You see here the connecting filaments is weak. See like this and then they're clustered here. So, so strong clusters and weak filaments here. HDM model and the top-down scenario predicts smooth, weak feature in the large-scale distribution of galaxies. So you see here, the galaxies are not very strongly clustered, but the, the feature itself are very smooth, you see? There aren't gaps between them like this. So that's one way we can tell. Study the universe structure, see what kind of dark matter we can get, okay? Okay, so 25% plus 5%, roughly 30%, what's left? Then there's something known as dark energy, quintessence. The reason we call this quintessence is because the Greeks believed in four 
uh, forms of matter, right? Earth, wind, fire, and what? Water, right? And they also believed in the fifth form of matter, which they called quint essence. Quint means uh, fifth. So we kind of get the idea beh behind this from them. You know, this, this other form of matter that you can't touch is just energy. It's believed to comprise 70% of the universe. Therefore, omega lambda is the density of dark energy, is known as 0.70, okay? Um, the density of lambda means dark energy and uh, 0.7. It is related to Einstein's constant. Uh, when Einstein, towards the end of his life, he was working on a unified model of the universe, he came up with a concept of the cosmological constant. He said this cosmological constant pushes galaxies away from each other. Then he took it back. He said, it's the greatest blunder in my life. I don't believe in such a thing. Well, this cosmological constant and dark energy are related. They do the same function. So if he ever knew that we came back and accepted his theory, he would roll over in his grave. That would be excellent. So it is... What, how can we best explain dark energy? We think it is the energy that is packed in vacuum space. So when you teach uh, someone what is vacuum, when they first learn it, they say, what is a vacuum? And you say, it's the emptiness of space. There's nothing there. It's just empty space. It turns out it's not empty space. There's some kind of energy there and known as dark energy. Remember I was showing you the, the density of dark energy? It's constant. So now the density of dark energy has taken over the density of matter. You see, it's actually the dominant form of energy in the universe. Recent discoveries of the brightness of supernovas since 1998 have proven this. So the 1998 observations of supernovas See here, one of the things we, do, we did is when we did the velocity of galaxies receding away from us versus their distance, we find that they, they fit the pattern, but when we go to very far distances, the velocities are a little bit lower. Very, very, very far distances. So what does that mean? Back in the past, the universe was not accelerating, was not moving as fast as it is now. So that means the universe has started accelerating, okay? Its expansion rate. The velocities are lower for greater distances than what the graph indicates. That means the universe is accelerating, you see? Why is it accelerating? Dark energy is taking over.